we're gonna give everybody one more minute. So, and then we will start. Okay, so I wanna introduce Barbara Cotto Jimenez, who is a uh, part of a startup FIU procurement, is the director of the program, and she will introduce, uh, explain to you all about the Navigator program. Thanks, Adriana. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, it's always great uh, to see the support and the interest of our small business community when it comes to great offerings uh, for you all to enhance your skills and scale your businesses. Uh, this uh, programming today comes in through the Miami-Dade uh, Business Navigator Program. The Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program uh, was funded in part through a cooperative agreement between uh, the U.S. Small Business Administration and a startup FIU procurement. So what is the SBA Community Navigator Pilot Program? Um, established by the American Rescue Plan Act back in 2021, the SBA uses a community navigator approach to help small businesses with economic recovery. The program is comprised of a lead hub. In this case, our lead hub is the Small Business Development Center at FIU or the SBDC. And um, Startup FIU Procurement is the spoke or the organization that deploys to the community advocates to work with small business on recovery and resilience. 100 million to 51 grade T's were uh, funding broken in through national tiers and South Florida became one of those. So what else happens with the SBA Navigator? Our goal is to improve long-term economic recovery and resilience among small businesses, particularly in Miami, focus on the Miami date a small business community, but not exclusive, meaning that we are inclusive also of our friends in Broward, Monroe, and Palm Beach County. A focus is placed on businesses owned by veterans, women, as well as socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. And we comprise all the activities led through Spokes and the Hub. So who, today is servicing small businesses within the Navigator scope. We have as partners, Ascendas, Branches, the EDC of South Miami-Dade, Prospera, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Startup FIU Procurement, which I lead along a great team, and the SBDC at FIU. So what areas do we currently service? As I mentioned before, we are focusing in the uh, Miami-Dade area, but being inclusive and servicing all uh, the South, as we will say, or all the Tri-County area, but focus and targeting the Miami-Dade County businesses. We received the grant of $2.5 million to invest within those businesses within the next two years and we have partner, we have as partners specifically target minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, veteran owned businesses and LGBTQ businesses. So how can you find more information about the navigators and how can you learn more about the different activities that we are actually hosting? You can go to miamibusinessnavigator.com or you can follow us in our social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Miami Dade BizNav or at YouTube Miami Dade BizNav as well as through our social media platforms at Startup FIU Procurement. With that being said, uh, I would like to formally introduce Adriana Madriñan, a good friend of the house 
And many of you uh, know her for her hard work and dedication with small and minority-owned businesses through the SBDC at FIU to help us understand marketing for small and micro businesses. Adriana, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be today with all of you to talk about marketing for small and micro businesses. Uh, we only have an hour, so I'm going to try to make it very specific and we will use a case today. I have a client that is called the Sambo Street Food. Um, she's a, a, small, a micro entrepreneur and we will see all that she has achieved. I think it's, a, it's an amazing example that we can share today. So the agenda, we'll talk about the benefits of marketing, marketing channels that are available, many that we forget, uh, how to have a budget conscious marketing, how to create a marketing plan, and finally, an action, plan, uh, an action that you can take. So marketing is the process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customer requirements profitably. That's a mouthful. I understand. So let's break it into pieces so it's very easy for us to understand what is marketing. So the first part of marketing is that you need to identify and anticipate. That means you need to know your clients very well. You need to know where are they, what they want, what they like. Then satisfy. So the idea is that your product and service will make will um, provide what, what they need. Um, what the client needs or um, and what they want, and then a win-win to make it profitable for both parts. That means that you capture their money, but also they get a lot of benefits for what they pay. So what are the benefits of marketing? There are four main, main benefits when you do marketing. The first one is to generate efficiencies. When you know your niche, then you can be very efficient. That means that you communicate only to that group. Many times when I'm doing consulting, I ask who's your main target, who's your audience, who's your client. If your answer is still, be, uh, is, still is everyone, you need to work hard. That means you really need to find a niche that is appropriate for your products or services. As a small business, and I'm a small business too, we need to learn to market to the audience that is right for us. Otherwise, it will be very expensive and also, and even more, a completely waste of time. So find your niche. Who's the key audience for your products and services? Then getting the word out. You need to help clients to discover your products and services. Third, you need to show what makes you unique. So that's the reason they will prefer you over competitors. That's another role that marketing has. And finally, you will increase your sales. There is no sales unless you have built awareness and trust. Think of the brands that they usually buy and you will notice that if you don't know them, you don't buy them, of course. And if you, don't, you know them, but you don't trust them or you don't like them, you won't buy from them. So those are the four key elements when you do marketing. I'm going to make a parenthesis here. This webinar will be recorded and will be shared with all of you that are participating. So the key question is, are you doing marketing? And um, I, I cannot see all of you, but uh, I would like to know in the chat, how many of you are doing marketing? And um, you can start chatting, what you do, how you do it, it will be nice to know how many of you are really focused on that. So, chances are uh, that you, you are chances are that you are doing marketing. But even if you think you are not, you are not aware, or probably you are doing more than what you think. And I'll show you in a minute. So, good marketing is like a good recipe: is having the right ingredients in the right mix. So I agree, and some of you are saying it's hard to do it. it maybe it's not very organized, so, so that's what we will do today. So let's talk about the marketing channels. There are four areas of marketing channels. The first group of marketing channels 
is the ones that you own. So usually if you have a website or you have your own videos or you create a podcast, in fact, your products could be elements of marketing, your services, the content, your location. And then finally, uh, Google My Business. If you have a Google, like My Business, that is like it could become like another website. That's your own media. The second group is the earned media. That means when someone talks about you, that you, you earn because you have a good product or because you have a good service. So then uh, people can give you testimonials or maybe they interview you or they can write an article about you. They can mention referrals or reviews. The third group is the share media is when we, we share, we post things in Facebook, in Twitter, in LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, sorry, TikTok, I'm sorry, the C got deleted and Google My Business. I, if you don't know, you can post also in Google My Business and that can be shared. So that's a share media. These three groups, I like them very, very much because you, don't, you are not paying. You are investing maybe time uh, if you, if you want to do it on your own, but you are not paying. And those are things that you can decide how to do it and to nurture. The fourth group is when you pay. So it could be Facebook ads, Instagram ads, um, sponsor posts, when you pay for lead generation, when you pay for a magazine ad or radio ad. Okay, so those are the four groups. The way I have put the numbers is to help you know in which order is ideally to start working on them. So work in your own media. So what does your key image uh, and um, where people will find you and recognize you. Then if you can start from the first time in your earned media, if you have a good product or a good service, start from the beginning to get reviews uh, in Google My Business or even Facebook or what, what, whatever you use for the reviews, get testimonials, mentions, all of that. Start from early in the process. Then share media. You can make things that people share and make it very amicable for everybody. And finally, if you want, I'm not saying no, but you can also pay media. I worked for 10 years in an advertising agency. Of course, in advertising agencies, what we do is work in the fourth group. So we do a lot of the work, so you pay for it. Sometimes in, there's, um, there are community managers that can help you with the share media. But um, overall, or you can have someone to develop your website, but overall, those one, two, and three are areas of, that you can manage on your own. So let's talk about a budget conscious marketing, because when we're a small or um, really micro business, we want to do it in the most efficient way. This is according to the SBA that uh, overall, in 2018, companies have spent between seven and eight percent in um, of their revenues in marketing. Business to consumer companies, that means business that sell to um, to uh, to consumers, to individuals, tend to spend more than companies that sell to other businesses. The reason of that is that when you sell to a business, you need fewer clients that maybe will buy more than when you buy to consumer, you, get to, you need to get to each of the consumers. But remember, this is a spectrum for all the industries and all the sizes of a small business that if we think it can go really up to like, I don't know, 500 employees. Um, so remember, that's the number on the on paper. It doesn't mean you need to do it that way. And today I'm gonna show you a case that has proven to grow slowly, but very well, just by doing it in the way that you can make it in a very efficient way, both in time and money. So some things to have a conscious, conscious uh, budget will be definitely find your niche. If you really know the group that you're targeting, either their business, 
government agencies or clients, be very focused on who you want to reach. Otherwise, you will be losing money and time. As we saw in the chart before, start investing in your own earn and share media first before you pay. Make sure those three bubbles are structured well early in the process. Uh, make sure you have a clear marketing objective and plan. Sometimes when I ask what is the marketing objective, companies, they just say, you know what, get more clients, but they haven't really thought it through. It's important to know what is the key objective of your business. There are sometimes that businesses want to grow. Maybe sometimes that businesses want, um, um, you know, establish better in a location. Um, sometimes you want to uh, promote the benefits of the product. So there are many different uh, moments of the business and those business objectives will drive your marketing objectives and the plan. So if I don't know where I'm going, it's hard to get my, my results because if I'm doing all of things all over the place, chances is I'm not gonna find what I want. And then finally, be focused and consistent with your efforts. And I tell you after working for 10 years in a media agency, usually you see the results of your efforts after three to four months. So if you start doing something of course, you have to measure, but don't be changing and changing and changing. Invest at least a quarter to three months in a project so you can see the results. It's very difficult to see it, even though social media has all the tracking, but it's very difficult to see the real impact in very short time. So let's talk about how to create a marketing plan. So we say we are going to be very conscious how we use our budget, and we found that, yes, to our surprise, marketing was not only Google, Facebook, and buying ads. Wow, is my website, is my location, is the uniform of my employees. So let's see how we play with all those elements. So imagine we are making a, this recipe and we are combining all the elements in the right proportions and the right measurements. So Seneca, as, as you know, was one of the greatest thinkers uh, of the history, it says, no one does, um, if, if one does not know which port is one sailing, no wind is far favorable. So definitely, if I don't know where I'm going, doesn't matter what I do, it's not gonna bring results. So I need to know first where I'm going. So the number one element when you do your marketing plan is to know uh, what is your marketing goal. And the marketing goal always should mirror your business goals. So maybe you are in a stage of expansion or maybe you are creating a new location or maybe nobody knows you. You just need to bring awareness that you exist. Or maybe, um, maybe uh, you use a new technique that nobody knows. So you need to educate. So it will be very different depending on your business. According to HubSpot, these are some ideas of examples of uh, for marketing goals. So increase brand awareness. So if nobody knows about your business, you need to increase brand awareness. Or maybe you need to generate high quality leads. Sometimes the small businesses start selling to everyone and then they reach a point that they want to improve the quality of the leads they are getting. Or maybe acquire new customers. Uh, or maybe could be increase the consumption of the current customers. Uh, increase website traffic, for instance, if you sell online, um, establish industry authority. So when you want to become the expert, that's a completely different marketing because it's a different goal. Increase the customer value. If you want to prove that with your product and service, you can deliver better results, that will be different. Boost brand engagement. So when you want people to be engaged and become more loyal, increase revenue. So depending what is your marketing goal, you will prepare your marketing campaign. And think of, give it a time to grow. So if you, you remember, we wanna bring awareness. So when people know about us, they try our product or service. When they try it, they can refer other people. So, so understand which is the stage of your business and set up the goals based on that. 
the number two element that you need on your business plan is to know who's your client. And you can either sell to consumers, sell to businesses, or sell to government. And it's important to know today we're not going to talk about segmentation or your client specifically. That's a completely new topic, but really know your client to the best. Where are they located? How can you find them? At what time do they want them to talk uh, you to talk to them? All of that. So really know if you are in government, which agencies. Not every agency is for you. So remember, as a small businesses, the, our biggest secret as a small business is to find your niche. So here's when you need to understand who are your consumers or the businesses or the government agencies you are reaching and really identify that niche and know them better than anybody else. The third point is you need to know your competition, your competitors, maybe new participants, or substitute products. If you do, for instance, flower arrangements for weddings, a substitute product are candles. You need to know the price. You need to know how people buy them, all of that. New participants. Now more than ever, we need to be super aware of new participants. Um, everything is moving very fast, and I think the pandemic really gener it became like a sprout. A, 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 yeah, a lot of seeds for small businesses um, started in the last two years. The fourth is to really understand your selling proposition. So why should uh, you buy from me? So um, instead of my competition. So that's very important. Once you have all those elements, remember the goal, know your client, know your competitors, and then what makes you unique, then we're gonna create this recipe. As Elon Musk, Ma, Musk says, if you're trying to create a company, it's like baking a cake. You have um, to have all the ingredients in the right proportion. So then the number, uh, uh, the fifth point of your business plan is the marketing mix. And if you were like me, that we started many years ago marketing, or uh, we learned at the university, and then we, even though we practice it, it used to be for peace, product, price, promotion, and place. Now there are seven. Product, price, promotion, place, people, process, and physical evidence. The reason is we have learned as on the media channels that I show you that everything connects. Everything I do for my brand. So people don't perceive one thing, the product, and then the price separate, and then the people. No, they perceive the whole integrated experience. So we need to see all those points. So when we talk about product, uh, it doesn't make sense to develop a product that nobody wants to buy. Many businesses decide to create a product and service first and then check the market. My advice is like the very successful companies, develop, look at the customer and their needs first and then develop the right product and service. So the product, you need to check the functionality, the appearance, the warranty, the quality, the packaging. So everything that the client is looking on that specific product. As I told you, I was gonna work with one case. This is a small business that we attend. It's called El Sambo Street Food. And I like this case because they are really mini and they have managed to grow organically. That means that they're not paying advertising to, to grow. So if I go back to the first four things that I said to you, the, the objective of El Sambo was to bring more clients to the location and increase revenue. Those were their marketing objectives. They are very clear about their clientele. They know that they are basically people that live or work around the location. Um, young people, uh, they have is um, traditional food from Latin America. Um, and and uh, so that attracts a lot of people that want to go back to their roots or really try uh, food that attracts them um, to try new dishes. Competitors, yes, they have a lot of competitors. Very close by, for instance, they have a competitor that is sales vegan food. 
and it's very, um, a lot of people like it. So what happened with, for in this specific case of food, is if I have $20 in my wallet, my competitors is any place that I can go and spend the $20, even Publix. So I need to be aware of all of that. What makes it unique is really their dishes because they are really gourmet dishes, even though they are in a, in a, in a street location and, um, and they really have affordable prices, but they are very unique and very um, gourmet on what they offer. So that's the product that they have. Price, uh, price is not only what the client is willing to pay for it. The price must be competitive, but it doesn't mean it should be the cheapest price. I think as a small business, that's a mistake we make. In fact, when I was talking to the business owner of El Sambo, she clearly said to me that they have noticed that when they lowered the prices, people thought the food was not good enough. So they, they have learned that they have to compete with price, also with um, products that are equivalent on the quality. Uh, so that's important that, and they need to know their benefits. Oh, I forgot to tell you what makes them unique. That was the unique selling proposition. They have unique dishes. Um, one of the dishes that has a great success is for instance, the fried fish. So I, they are really clear what are their products that are very unique that people really travel to go there and eat that dish. So for price, we wanna say the selling price, if there is a discount, payment agreement, price matching services and credit terms. When we talk to El Sambo Street Food, currently they deliver through DoorDash, Uber Eats and uh, Grubhub recently. They not only made the agreement, but why I have this slide here is because they also managed to understand how to use the pricing. So the, of course, when you go and you buy, there is a price. When you, daily, when you order online, there is a price. But when people order through Uber Eats, DoorDash, or Grubhub, they already reorganize the pricing list. So yes, it's true. They have to put part of the, pay part of the service, but now they're not eating the whole uh, commission. So price is not, you want to do a price that people understand what they feel comfortable for what you are giving them, what you are receiving. And this goes both even for products and services. I know in the last slide, I'd say, what is the product? It could be the description of your service. And here, what is the pricing? How do you manage prices? How, what people understand with your price? Um, when they see the price and they hear about your product, what do they understand? The place is where customers buy the product or service. So nowadays, this could be a physical place or an online place. Um, so is where the product is distributed, where you can buy it, when it can be distributed, when it's convenient. Um, and products and services should be available in the right place, at the right time, at the right amount, and under the right conditions. If you think during the pandemic, we really change our habits. So maybe nowadays, many of the things we buy online is because it's the right place at the right time. You can buy something in the middle of the night. You can buy something in your pajamas and nobody cares. So that's have also changed the concept of place. It's not only a physical place, but it could be a digital place. So as I say, place includes the distribution channels, the logistics, the service level, the location, the market, the coverage, the display. In regards to El Sambo, not only they have the location, but also they have worked really hard recently to work on their menu, to make it easy for clients to access the menu and the prices and buy online. So that's the idea, that with price is, is something that you make it, um, with price, it should be a win-win, something that you know people pay and they feel they pay good enough, but also uh, they enjoy the equivalent. If people feel like when you buy a bottle of water at the airport and they charge you $5, it's really disappointing. But of course, if I go and say that the bottle of water is five cents, 
I will think, oh my God, that water, I don't know where it's, does it come from? Because probably my reference point is about $1.50 or $2. So if it moves from what I'm expecting in pricing, then it doesn't work. So for instance, in this case, the delivery, that's why they can increase prices because people understand there is a service there. If you have a business, the same, you need to understand how you offer the business, how you make it um, um, your service, for instance, for a business, how you make it easier. Maybe for businesses, it's so difficult to pay it in one lump sum. So you want to split it, uh, maybe in a subscription. So you want to uh, make sure they pay little, but they re receive the same service. So you really want to understand how much they can pay and how to make it easy for them and how it's a win-win. Promotion is how the company communicates uh, all the offers to the clients, the branding, the advertising, the public relations, the corporate identity, sales, all the offers, the exhibitions, everything. Um, the idea is to get the attention and always be attractive, concise, and consistent. When we look at El Sambo, we will know that, yes, it's true. Oh, this is what as we talked before, when you talk a promotion, we say that we have own, earn, share, and paid media, and all the groups that we already discussed. When we look at the Zambo, do you remember that I say that they're not doing paid media? So what they are doing is with their own media, they have a website, they have the location, they have a blog, they write content in the stories, especially a lot, uh, or they have constantly going in with content, Google My Business, they manage Google My Business, impeccable. Earn Media, they have really worked on their Google reviews and that have really make a difference. But they also have reviews in Yelp, TripAdvisor and other. And Share Media, they are not everywhere, but what they're doing, where they are, they're doing it well. They're in Facebook and Instagram and they also uh, Google My Business. So when I, when you Google them, look at this. 90 Google reviews of five in Google My Business. And then whatever, Yelp, Facebook, maybe there are not so many, but TripAdvisor. So of course, if I'm looking for this place and I find this, that's a place I wanna go. I mean, it has such an amazing reviews everywhere. So they have really made an effort to collect all those reviews. The same, if you have a business, the same. Try to start with the review and testimonials as early as possible. Sometimes we have a business and we forget, but that's an amazing thing. Um, two days ago, my husband said he needed to go to check a doctor and we were seeing which one. Honestly, I say, let's Google the doctors and let's see the reviews. So what, that's key. I mean, nowadays we use it all the time, all the reviews. So if you have a good product and a good service, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for reviews. People. And I say people, of course, the physical people, but also think about the voice messages, the chatbots, etc. cetera. Uh, there are those that every time that we come in contact with the client, that's the first impression. Uh, the reputation of the brand is in, in, in that. And because we don't see, for instance, a chatbot nowadays, we think it's a person. Yes, it may be a system, but, but we take it as a person. So how is the right attitude and all of that? We, for instance, there are things like if you go use um, QuickBooks, you will see that there's a lot you can do through the chatbot. They can really help you. But it's a machine. There is a point that it says, okay, do you want to connect with an assistant or whatever, a representative? And you have seen that you have talked for a while. They have really helped you solve issues, but it ha time has passed. So make sure that whenever you connect is the, the, the voice message is the correct one, the chatbot and the people. So invest in training your people. So you want people to have, even if it's you, even if you are the only owner of your business, is your service proper? How's your attitude? How's your customer service? Your appearance? Um, how's your portrayal? How do you connect to people? 
So in this case, we have here Gonzalo with his uniform at El Sambo. Process. So really, business owners are not interested how you run the business. What they want to know is to acquire your products and services easily. So don't make your client waste energy. Uh, any time delayed, uh, in, uh, lack of information, um, the platforms or the systems are not working or the connectivity, that bothers the client. It makes them lose energy. Um, I was seeing a, a video that only exists in Spanish because he's Mexican and he doesn't talk, uh, he doesn't give conferences in English, I don't know why, about the, how the brain behaves with mar in marketing. And he said one of the things is um, that don't make your client waste energy. Make it as simple as possible. How you make it easy for them to go to buy your products and services. So all the delivery time, the information you give to the client, do they have to wait? What is the waiting time? The connectivity, the problem resolution um, is a helpful team. And again, save the client's energy. So in the case of Ensemble, what they did is with the link tree, when you click in your Instagram that there's where they have more movement with Google My Business, I'll say two, the two things are very active. It goes to this menu. So immediately from where you are, you can order online, go to the website, find a delivery partner, see the menu or see the blog. So that's making the life easy. Because sometimes I find someone something in Instagram and then you have to Google to find the address, to find the phone number. How can you make it super easy? So this is a, a way. Then the physical evidence. So everything, everything you do connects. So if you are doing a lot of things that are not really planned with a wrong or not clear goal, marketing goal, you are sending a lot of messages, but they're not building on top of each other. You wanna connect everything. You want that everything makes sense when you, are, you put it together. So physical evidence is the integrated experience where all the elements uh, in the marketing mix combine and generate a un unique and pleasant interaction. Uh, and it's in line with the customer needs and expectations. So it's like how you connect everything. So is the, all, the, all those elements of the marketing mix we just talked, imagine that you put it together. So you, synergy, synergy is not one plus one, two. Synergy is one plus one, three. That means that when you put together, things grow even better, look better, are more remar are remarkable, are more potent. So El Sambo combines the location, the uniforms, the experience of the location, even though it's in the street, the food, all the information, and, and you saw all the other processes and all the other things. Finally, you need to measure. That's the key point. So remember the, all the elements of the marketing plan, marketing objective, your client, who's your client, where to find the client, everything, your competitors, where to find your competitors, who they are, what, what are their strengths, their weaknesses. Number four, your, what makes you unique. Number five, sorry, this should be number six, I'm sorry. Number five is the marketing mix. And number six, the performance indicators. You need to measure what you are doing. So for instance, in the case of El Sambo, one thing is that since they're working on bringing people to the location, one thing that they're starting to do is to look at Google My Business that shows every day how's the profile of clients coming. So then they can see that maybe Wednesdays or Thursdays is the weakest day. So maybe they can improve. Maybe they can make late this Thursday and have, uh, I don't know, maybe a happy hour or a lunch special or salads that day, I don't know. Um, then uh, Fridays, as you can see, is more busy over uh, during the evening. So maybe they want to do uh, end of the week breakfast. Because remember, not only they want to bring clients to the location, but it's important to know that there's only three ways to make money in a business. Even if you are a business to business. If you are a business to business, again, you have to measure 
how many clients are converting, how many do I, am I finding, am I reading when I post something or when I send an email, are they reading my email? So always measure what you do. Um, and then um, take actions based on that. It's like my goal, what I'm doing, is it making sense and how I can correct it. So measure, 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 measure. Finally, a call to action. And I'm gonna send, when they send the presentation, this chart. Uh, I wanted to run a little bit so we can do an exercise together. Uh, so as you can see, there are the four at the top, marketing goal, marketing uh, target marketing, competitors, unique selling proposition, then the seven Ps, product, price, promotion, place, people, process, physical evidence, and then the KPIs. So um, I would like to do an exercise. And actually, I don't know if there is a way we can open the microphone here, actually. Um, I don't know if anybody has a business to business and wants to help me that we can do this, this exercise for a business to business. So you can see that uh, it's not only for business to consumer. Is there anybody in the chat that could help me? Yes, Stephanie, do you want to help me? If you say chat, yes, because honestly, I don't know how to give you access. Okay, Stephanie, great. <laughs> don't worry, I'll guide you. So what is your business, Stephanie? Tell us um, in your chat, what is your business about? Adrienne, I think that I'm able to allow the talk here. Is this okay. barrier, correct? Yes. All right, so. Hello, Stephanie, nice to hear you. Tell us about your business. I think if you talk, we can hear you. Okay. Um, maybe somebody else. Ah, Stephanie's here again. Can we hear Stephanie? Oh, yeah. it's not working. Okay. Don't worry, Stephanie. Anybody else that has a business to business that could help me? Any? Juan. Juan saying that he can do it. In okay, Juan. Please join uh, the conversation. Hello. Okay, Juan. So tell us about your business. Tell everybody about your business. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. So we sell medical supplies to um, mainly to the urologists, urologists offices and cancer centers in, in urology departments, okay. mostly for biopsy, biopsy devices. Okay. Okay. So what is your marketing goal, Juan? What marketing do you want goal? to achieve? Um, get more clients. And um, that's one of them. The other one is sell more products to the current clients. I can increase the, the uh, average uh, purchase, um, which we have a new product. Okay. Okay. So you say that your target market are urologists. Yes, so uh, our segmentation is a little bit different. Uh, so we have urology offices, we have cancer centers, and then we have hospitals. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, who are your competitors, Juan? Mm, names or yeah, yeah yes. well the, tell us i have mm -hmm. overall maybe three big competitors and they are tell us a little bit so i have two two different products or three um i can give you the names for for the new product is sipco c-i-v-c-o um the one. Have yeah. yeah 
bar biopsy, so which is a big Where guy. are they from? Are they American? They're international international products or Both how of my are they competitors are, are American? Mm -hmm. Okay. And are they big so, companies or small companies? Yes, or how? yes, really big companies. Probably Fortune 1000 companies. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. When I say American, they're probably international companies, like they're all over. Uh, okay. But they, they're they mostly American companies, but they sell everywhere. Multi billion okay, so dollar companies, yes. Okay, multinational brands, big companies. Of course, if when you guys are doing it, you can put the names of the companies here. Right. What makes you unique, Juan? I know, of course, tell us what products do you sell so everybody knows exactly what is it. Uh, so I sell... Uh, Prostate biopsy devices. Uh, like whenever. what? What, needles, what are they? Needles. Needles. Pretty much needles. Okay. Needles and needle guides. That's, and needle those guides. are mostly my, my products, yes. And, and an anesthesia product, but it's for the same uh, okay. procedure. Yes. So will you say that they're generic products or is something that's very unique that nobody else has? Or how will you describe them? So uh, in the US, there are probably... For one of the products, there are probably three or four competitors, including us. And uh -huh. worldwide for that, there's probably about seven or eight total. And for biopsies, I would say there are probably about 10 uh, big companies, like manufacturers. There are smaller distributors around. Okay. But the, the, but the brands are, are what we're um, going against. Okay. So definitely multiple competitors depending on the products. But will you say, since that need, there are so many competitors, so what really thing can make you different or unique? Um, I would say our supply chain. Uh, okay, uh, explain we, that more. The way we have grown has been instead of growing at a, at a multiple of, of, of or, or growing 100% year after year, we've slowed down our growth to really have the product on hand when they're, when our client needs. We went really niche, so we, we really specialize in smaller uh, clients or a smaller area, and, and we make sure that we have a lot of the same product for the same type of clients, instead of having multiple products, which we will eventually, but our idea is to have a lot of clients that use the two or three products that we sell and have enough inventory that we never run out. So we're never okay. out of stock. Okay. So that's and another it, thing yeah. is we're close to our clients. If they need something urgent, they usually get it uh, pretty quick. Okay. Perfect. So as you can see with Juan, we just answered the key questions at the top. You really need to understand where you are going. Who are you selling to? What are the key competitors? And what makes you unique? Because Juan needs to go if you have a product, maybe the product is uh, more flexible or, or, but maybe when it's like a product like the needles, I mean, when, when you go to the lab to get your blood draw, you don't ask which needle they're going to use, uh, which brand. So pr he needs to sell to those businesses other things. So one advantage that he's saying is that since supply chain is so clogged, he can really offer the can have the product at hand and be there when the others cannot. Okay, so Juan, uh, so the products we say we have needles. So we're gonna work in the, your product, your mix. Needle and so needle you guides. have needles. That's, I don't know if it's one S or two. No, one S. Uh, got needle guides. That's it. And uh, you say, what else? No, the other one is also a needle. It's for anesthesia, but it's also a needle. Okay. So they're very right. specialized needles. Okay. How do you feel regarding price? Uh, our price is competitive. Competitive. Mm -hmm. And how do you set the prices? Do you look at your competitors or how do you set your prices? Um, trial and error. So the way we did it was uh, we we went high a little bit and low with one client and we saw the response and then we kept those mm -hmm. prices and then we we kind of went to the middle of, of how what our clients were paying and then we, we, we stuck with that. Okay, okay. 
Uh, okay, so tell me about the promotion. How do you communicate your products and services? How you do it? Do you uh, have a right, website? Do we do have a website. So uh, let's talk about your own media. What do yeah. you have? So we have website, business cards. Uh, we're, we're in the process of changing a lot of those things. Uh, we have uh, brochures that we give to, to, to our prospects. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that we really use, that's it. Okay. We really don't have much. Nothing. What about the earned media? Do you have reviews? Do you have... Nothing. Um, okay, so that's an opportunity. Yes. I and, know it's and, difficult in business. Yes, in this business it's... But, um, but referrals, mm -hmm. referrals, so they could, that we could be earned media. Okay? Yeah. okay, that's part of earned media. Okay. So that's a good point. When sometimes people cannot write publicly, they use you or tell that they're, you are the best, but they are willing to refer. So if you cannot get reviews, try to get referrals so that they talk about you to someone else or they connect you with someone else. Okay. What about share media? Do you use any, I don't know, LinkedIn or any social media that you can... We don't, we don't really use it. We have, we have LinkedIn, but we don't really use it yet. Uh, our plan is mm -hmm. to start writing posts at least once, twice a month and be more uh, active on social media. Uh, another thing that we're doing is we're going to a conference this weekend uh, to a urology conference. Okay. So that's promotion. I don't know. That would be paid media. But that's paid because you paid. Uh-huh. Yes. For a trade show. Uh-huh. The good thing of a trade show is that when you're done, then you can invite them. You can start posting more things and connect with them so that share media could grow because you will get a pretty good list of people that may be interested. Yes. Okay. So I know place, you, you don't have a, do you have an office? Or no, a place office. that people can attend, no. home office. So. Uh, what will describe you? What will you consider your place? Your website? Website, and, and I really go and visit clients. So it's a lot of website, LinkedIn, and. and uh, okay. okay. So that's interesting because the place in his case is the website and office visits. But he needs to imagine when he visits these places, he is this best example of his business so it's a people and place combination okay so how he portrays when he visits the offices is key for for to showing how big his he is or how he looks and his website definitely when when you have this type of businesses and nobody knows where you are your website being in google my business remember when we look at the sambo that i google sambo and it was everywhere that generates trust so I want you to think, think also as place, Google yourself. And if you are there and people can see you in different like angles, because you are in Google My Business, because you had articles, because then uh, you start generating trust. And when you generate trust, then people perceive you as uh, bigger. So, so that's very, very important. Okay. Um, okay. People, so we have two minutes, three minutes. People, so people, people will be you. To be yes, One. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then you have people doing calls or anybody else. Uh, accounting, uh, but that doesn't have to do with. Marketing. But anybody that accounting, talks yeah. to the client, only you. No, no, just me. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the process. Um, for a new client or for, a, so the good thing about this is once they buy, it's a recurring class sell. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> processes, I reach out to the client, uh, find out what, what they're actually using right now. It's, if it's a recommendation, they, it's, it's already, we already know what they're using. We come in, uh, we come in with samples, they do a test or they do a, a, a surgery with our products and then we get feedback from them and they usually get uh, a quote. And uh -huh. they place an order. And the place an order, uh, that's the sales, sales process. Okay. So if you can see what Juan said is very important because he connects. But the key element is the trial. 
when they try out the, the product and then is the purchase. So it's important that you know what is the key element of your process that people are not gonna see, but how can you make it easy? How can you connect? How can they try it and it's easy? How can they start buying it and it's easy, okay? And physical evidence will be the inter in integration of everything, Juan. So you need to start thinking, okay, what is that you makes you unique that you can communicate better? How can you show that you are bigger? Remember when I say Google yourself. Like, um, Probably more LinkedIn uh, articles or blog posts. Yeah, and that Google your company. And if you see in Google that you show in a lot of places, that will bring a lot of trust. That's what people will do, um, okay. will tend to do. So physical evidence is the mix of all of that. So, and how are you measuring the results? So we measure, we have a CRM, we use HubSpot, uh, and we, mm -hmm. we uh, follow up our deals or calls or prospect or close of one, close of lost. Uh, we track uh, our sales per year. We do it per year right now uh, mm -hmm. per product so and per market. So we do how many of this type of needle do we sell this year compared to last year? And mm -hmm. what was our goal? What was our goal? So we kind of track. So from, from, go ahead. So. No, I think from now on that you are in the in gonna go to the trade show, start getting measurements from there. Like how many people do you meet? How many people start in your website? Then after the show, how many people continue talking to you? Then how many visits you get? So try to get different measurements that you want to take. And this time that you're going to a trade show is a very good opportunity. Okay? To do that. Juan, thank you for your help. You. This was a good exercise because it helped us that to see that uh, we can do it even if you're a business to business. That if you do a coordinated effort, uh, then you can connect and then you can see where I'm missing, when the, where are the holes that maybe you need to improve. Okay, so let me. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, let me close this. And then, um, so I don't know, we, unfortunately, this is a one hour meeting. Uh, if you have questions, we are happy you can write to us. I'm sure Barbara can put or Clementina in the chat where you can connect with us and we can help you better. And if you need us, we are, I'm part of the business navigator consultant through the SBD uh, to the Startup FIU procurement. So please uh, feel free to contact us. I don't know, Barbara, um, what you, how we should, uh, if you want to close now or if you want to give a space for questions, but I know it's time. Um, I would like to, um, with the permission of the audience, open up in case that they have one or two more questions that they need to have addressed by you. Um, in terms of the content, the information that was shared uh, with all of you today. Otherwise, uh, you can always contact us at startupproc at fiu.edu or through our social media handles and we will be happily to assist. We also encourage you to sign up to Miami-Dade Navigators. You will get assistance on multiple areas, including access to capital, government procurement, marketing, among others, as well as you will be participating and will have the opportunity to participate in multiple um, workshops. We would like to thank you for participating today. And if there are no other questions, I see that in, in the chat, we see, will we get an email from this webinar and what is Diana's email? Um, no, we don't currently have it in Spanish, only in English. Um, you will receive- But I email. can add something, Barbara. I found okay. out this week that if you save your documents as PDF and you go to Google Translate, it will translate the whole document. So remember, once you receive the presentation, Save it as a PDF in your computer and then go to Google Translate, upload the presentation, and it will translate everything. So that's my recommendation. 
Very good. So on that note, you will receive an email uh, from the Miami-Dade Navigators, uh, including the presentation and all the details shared in here today. Clementina has also shared on the chat the address to register with the SBA Navigators. Once again, we thank you. And we look forward to see you in our next event that should be on May 25th. I hope you all have a great afternoon. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you for inviting me and it's a pleasure to be together with all of you. Thank you.